So I wanted to do a little bit of a different video today and I wanted to share with you some of my top Mac OS tips and tricks that you may not have heard about. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it, starting with number one, and that is a feature called Stacks. Now, right now, as you can see, my desktop is pretty filthy. So if I right click on my desktop and I click use Stacks, you can see that's gonna clean it up quite a bit. And if I come over here and I click on one of these Stacks, it's gonna drop it down and I still have access Access to everything on my desktop but at least now it's much neater and moving on to the finder window this is something I've spent a lot of time trying to perfect recently because I'm not sure about you guys but what I personally have been doing up until recently is if I'm organizing files on my computer I generally have multiple finder windows open like this and I kind of have to find a file and then if I find it I can drag it over and copy it and it just becomes a little bit of a mess so what I've discovered is that just like Safari or your internet browser, you can actually open up tabs inside the same finder window. So on your keyboard, hold down command and press the T key, and I'll do that twice. And you can see this has actually opened up several tabs. And this is really, really powerful because say for example, I'm in my downloads folder and then I need to come into a folder I have on the desktop. For example, this LG monitor video I've been doing, I can very easily come into the downloads folder, copy this particular PDF, and then just paste it here. And I'm just in the exact same finder window the entire time. So instead of all of those random finder windows, I can just have these three open. For example, this is my NAS. So right now I have my downloads folder, the folder that I'm trying to organize, and also my NAS folder all open. And it's just a lot cleaner and a lot easier to see visually. Now, while we're still in the Finder window, what I've also discovered recently, and I'm not sure if this is an update in macOS Monterey, which is the newest version of macOS, but if you come up here and then you come to Show View Options, you actually have the option to increase the icon size. And as you can see there, that's going to increase that little icon off to the left here. And this is really handy for photos and videos and things like that because you don't have to use the icon view. You can actually switch to list but still get a relatively good and a decent sized preview of the file. So for example, if I come down here into my wallpapers folder, and by the way guys, if you enjoy these particular wallpapers that you see in my videos, I have them all available for you. I will link them down in the description below. But getting back on topic, if I come down into my wallpaper pack and I open this particular one up, if I again come here and go to show view options and I change that to slightly bigger, you can see now that I can actually get a better idea of what each wallpaper is, but it's still relatively compact in the list view. And then you of course have access to all of your metadata off to the side here as well. So let's close this down. And another really helpful shortcut I found when navigating Finder is if you hold the option key. As you can see there, it's actually popped up the folder path for this particular folder. And I can now see exactly where I am. And I can instantly switch back to the origin of this particular folder. So for example, again, I hold down the option key. I'm now in the minimalism wallpaper pack. Uh, if I want to go back to just the overall wallpaper folder, I just click on that and I'm back here. Now, of course, you can come up here and just go back and forward, but sometimes I just find it, especially the further you get into a particular folder system, it's just easy to hold down option and see exactly where you are. Now, moving on to tip number five, again, if we go more forwards into this particular folder structure and I hold down the option key, if I now hover my mouse down here and I hold the shift button and then I click on a particular folder, I can instantly switch between all of the folders in that particular directory. Uh, if I come forward to the minimalism wallpaper pack, for example, and click that, uh, I have access to all of these folders and I can just click designs and boom, that's gonna take me straight to that particular folder and everything inside it. So again, that is holding down option and then hovering your mouse over here, holding down shift, clicking on a particular folder and that just allows you to instantly switch between them. Now, one other tip while we're still in the Finder window is if you want to navigate to a particular Finder path and you know that path, if you click Shift, Command, and then G on your keyboard, that's gonna bring up 
a window where you can actually just type in the folders or the paths that you want to go to. So for example, if I want to look in my NAS, you can see this is actually going to give me a drop down of all of the folders inside my NAS. And right now I'm navigating this with just the arrow keys on my keyboard. And if I press the right arrow key on videos, for example, it's going to bring me further across into this particular path. And if I go down to Let's say, for example, pending, press the right arrow key on the keyboard again. It's going to bring me to the pending folder. And if I just hit the return key, it's going to bring me directly to that folder with just a couple of taps of the keyboard. So for tip number seven, this is actually an app. And I'm just going to quickly open up an example here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now, I'm sure you're probably familiar with the live text feature that was introduced in macOS Monterey. Essentially, it allows you to copy text from photos or PDFs like this, but it does have some limitations. For example, you can't copy text from protected PDFs, restricted websites, or even iBooks. And also, if you're running an older Mac, you might not be able to update macOS to Monterey in the first place. And that is where the sponsor of this video comes in. It's an app called Text Sniper. You've probably seen it on this channel before, but it allows you to pretty much copy text from any video, image, PDF, or scan with just a couple of clicks. So to give you a better example of some of the limitations of live text, if I just copy this particular PDF document, which has been scanned uh, onto the computer, you can see that live text will highlight the text, but it doesn't get certain words like such a and the least estimation. There's a lot of different stuff that it doesn't pick up. And you'll also notice that uh, it's copied just everything on the page. Uh, and if I now copy this by pressing Command and C, and I paste it in the notes here, uh, it doesn't look very good at all. There's a lot of line breaks, a lot of text missing. It's a bit all over the place. So let's see if we can solve that with Text Sniper. So I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to come up here to Text Sniper. I'm going to make sure Keep Line Breaks and the Additive Keyboard is selected. Additive Keyboard essentially means you can copy several things and it's just going to keep adding it to the clipboard. And I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. So you can see the shortcut to capture text is Shift, Command, and 2. So I'm going to come down here, hold Shift, Command, 2. I'm going to copy this very first column. And then I'm immediately going to press Shift, Command, 2 again. And I'm going to copy this second column. And hopefully that picks that up because the edge is kind of cut off here. And I'm going to come back into the notes, Command V to paste. And as you can see, that's not only copied the first column, which is this section here, it's also copied that second column. Now, this is super, super, super handy if you are a student, for example. So let's just come up here and I'm going to clear out my clipboard history. And I'm just going to take a picture of this particular PowerPoint slide in this lecture. Now, this is something I used to do at university all the time. So now that we've taken a screenshot of this, I'm going to move forward and we're going to capture another slide here. So for example, this one here. So Shift, Command, 2. I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to come straight over to my notes, delete all of that, paste. As you can see, it got the two different slides here. And it's also kept the line breaks, the supply information here. It looks quite nice. The formatting looks pretty decent. And I only needed to paste this once. So you can imagine if this is containing a lot more text and it's longer, for example, it's like 10 different slides. You need a screenshot and just instantly get into notes. Text Sniper really, really does come in handy. And I will leave a link to Text Sniper down below. Okay, so let's say, for example, you have a image and you need to send this image to someone via email or the particular format that image was taken in is not compatible with a certain program. So let's say, for example, I have a scan here. This is just the scan we were looking at before. Right now, it is a PNG. If I right click on this, 
and I come here to quick actions and I go convert image. This is gonna give me a number of different options. So I can change the format from, say for example, HEIF to PNG or JPEG to PNG. And I can also decrease the image size. So right now it's relatively large, about 850 kilobytes, which is almost one megabyte. And I have a number of different options to reduce this by. So I can choose small, uh, I can delete the metadata if I like, then I can convert that. And as you can see there, we can now email this to someone and it's going to be a much smaller and more compatible file size than the original. And this is good for two reasons. Number one, you don't need to take that extra step of downloading an app or going to a website. And number two, it's just more secure because you don't have to upload this particular image to some random compression website. It's all done locally on your computer. Now, while we're talking about images and sending things via email, let's have a quick look at the preview because this is one thing not a lot of people know about, which is really surprising. So as you can see here, I have downloaded a example PDF document. And what can be really annoying, especially if you've scanned something, is that sometimes these particular pages here can be out of order. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know this, but if you don't, this is gonna blow your mind. You can actually hold down on this particular page, for example, and you can reorder the entire PDF. So say, for example, if you notice that page 21 should actually be before page 19, you can hold that, drag it, and just drop it before page 19, and that's going to completely reorder it. And this is gonna save you a lot of time, and you won't have to rescan a document, for example, if you screw up the order of scanning. Now, this last tip is, again, a relatively simple one, but I really don't see enough people doing it. So let's say, for example, I have a couple of folders. For example, this LG monitor folder, which I use to dump all the screen recordings and all the footage for one of the videos I uploaded on my channel. What I can do is click this folder, drag it, and drop it down in the frequently accessed section of my menu bar. And what this means is, for example, if I have a download that I wanna add, so for example, maybe this particular invoice, I wanna drag that and drop that into the LG monitor folder, I can just drop that in there, and as you can see, if I open this up again, that particular invoice is now in that folder. And I didn't have to open up any kind of finder windows or do anything. It was just one click and a drop, and that is in the appropriate folder. Nice, neat, and sorted. Likewise, if I need to quickly access something from this folder, I just click here and it's all ready to go. And if I don't need access to that folder anymore, I can simply drag it off there and release it onto the desktop to remove it. And then if I want to, let's say for example, I'm doing a different video, I can replace that with another folder. Or for example, again, lots of customization here, add all of these different folders so they're instantly available for me. And I don't have to keep them on the desktop or in documents, for example. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you found some of it interesting. But apart from that, I will catch you in the next one.